And now, Jim Kelly, our member to introduce our main speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Out of curiosity, how many of you have ever heard of four culture? Raise your hands. Hey, we're getting better. We were actually chartered by King County in 2003 to manage King County's cultural programs. And there's four programs. There's an arts funding program, a heritage funding program, a preservation program, and a public art program. Hence, four programs we call ourselves Four Culture. Today, I'm really excited because you're going to be able to hear about one of our four programs, public art, that is administered by the, one of the great public art managers in the country. And I know that sounds like hyperbole, but it's really true. And you'll, you'll be convinced of that, too, after you hear this presentation. I'm really excited to introduce Kath Bruner, director for the last 13 years, for King County's public art program. Her presentation today is focused on ordinary places that are transformed into extraordinary spaces because of the inclusion of public art. Please welcome Kath Bruner. All right, James, you said you'd boot this up for me. <laughs> Maybe I can do it myself. Just point and click, okay. It's so easy, he says. There we go, and he was right. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm really pleased and proud to be here and talk to you a little bit about the work of public artists in our public realm. The images that I'm about to show you aren't all from the city of Seattle, many of them are, but they're from throughout the United States and a lot of them are from here in King County. Sorry, I realized I had some props. Um, this title slide, I'll just take a moment to talk about this artwork. It's called Silver Thaw, and we just recently opened this project. It's actually a public-private partnership. So the building was constructed by Wright Rundstad and Company, but it's the Redmond City Hall, and this is the work of Ed Carpenter, which graces the entrance to the facility. It's a, it's a magnificent work of art. It kind of sets the tone for the entire building. Some of you may know something about public art. I don't know. How many of you are familiar with public art programs? How many of you know anything about Well, that's a goodly number of you. Um, then you may know that a lot of public art programs in the country were started in the 1970s. And at that point in time, it was a lot about taking studio works of art, large-scale works of art, and placing them in public places, plazas, for example. But this is a quote that we've been using for quite some time because we think that it summarizes the shift in thinking that's occurred in public art programs throughout the country. In the 70s, public art was very much about art in public places. But today's public artists are far more concerned with the art of making places public. Public art's a civic tool. It's not the only tool that communities have for making their places better and making their citizens more engaged and inspired, but it's a very effective tool. This is the work of Lorna Jordan and Paul Sori, and it's the entrance to the Justice Center in Kent. So you see that public art is no more art in the plaza. Today, it may be the plaza itself. This is a Justice Garden path. The artist designed a brick path and a flagstone path. They intersect at nodes throughout the garden space, and they symbolize the tame and wild sides of our nature. When we selected this artwork, we often work, we always work with committees that, that serve on selection panels and select artists. We try to put laypersons on there as well as professional artists. We had members of the Business Association serve on this selection panel, and a business leader from the Economic Development Association in Kent stood up at the selection process and said, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, and we were looking at a variety of proposals by various artists, you will choose this one. You will give us a remarkable public space that's also a garden where we can gather, where we can create community that physically links the new Justice Center, and it does physically link it in the form of a braid to the downtown commercial district. This is the work of I'm going to see if I'm This is the work of Seattle artist Buster Simpson. Buster is using his art along with public and private developers to establish community in the Belltown area of Seattle. 
These projects, as I said, involve both the public realm as well as private buildings. Buster is using his work to express the water that's running off from the, from the surrounding buildings. So they use the downspouts and the gutter system to create water features. Some of them hold water like the beckoning cistern, that large hand. It's actually based on Michelangelo's hand of God reaching out to the hand of man on the Sistine Chapel. And there's a gutter. You can see the gutter coming down from the top and connecting. The water glass is a water feature that's in a plaza and a private development. The small gutters that you see there are actually cleansing the water before it ends up at the street level. And then at the street level, the cistern steps, the water cascades down where it's used to water a public pea patch. So this is a way of bringing community together, linking both private and public developments, linking the public realm, talking about ecology, building community. So what can artists bring? What's art got to do with it? Well, I'm going to talk to you. There's many things that artists bring. But I'm going to talk to you today about four values that artists bring to the public realm. Public art can help create a, a unique community identity and add meaning and value to public space. Everywhere that we work in King County, and many of you who live and work in the city of Seattle may not realize the struggle that some of the other suburban cities in King County face as they try to establish their own identities. But everywhere that we go, people are beginning to express to us the desire to create a unique place, their own place. And so much of our world is dominated by the same kind of facilities. Everyone's got the Home Depot. Everyone's got the Safeway. Everyone's got the drugstore. And they want to create something that expresses their values and ideas. And public art is one terrific way of doing that. This is the downtown King County Courthouse, where we put a magnificent etched floor, etched stone and terrazzo floor by artist Linda Beaumont. Linda chose the March on Washington as the central theme for the courthouse floor. And even though the county had been named after the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King for many years before Linda was asked to work on this renovation, she was the first person to bring that expression into the courthouse, to really talk about the ideals of Dr. King and portray images from his life and from the life of all of us as citizens in the courthouse. This has real value. Civic space is a place where we come together, where we have to understand each other, where we have to come together on major issues of our day. And I think when Lance Dickey, the Seattle Times writer, wrote an editorial about the magnificence of the space and what value it brings, he's not an art writer, but he summarized it so brilliantly by saying it's a worthy centerpiece of our civic life. Artist Doug Cooper created floor-to-ceiling vine charcoal murals that depict the history of King County. It flows in and out of various time frames. You see popular figures like Ray Charles, who played on Jackson Street. You also see Tom Hanks from Sleepless in Seattle. You see the great work of the Chittenham Locks when we established the Ballard Locks. All of these things portray our history and bring pride of place. On opening day, we had several speakers. We had lined up Council Member Carolyn Edmonds, who was then on our board, to be the official speaker about art. But she was preceded by Ron Sims, Norm Mailing, and Sheriff Sue Rare. Every single one of those speakers talked about the power of art. They talked about the pride of place that it creates. They talked about the fact that many of them had been working in the courthouse for over 20 years. And now when they came to work, they had a renewed sense of pride and a renewed understanding of the great history of King County and Seattle and their place in it. This is one of the few times when sheriffs have actually shaked my hand and, and thanked me for the wonderful job that the artists did. Many times, artwork in civic buildings can elevate the entire decorum of place. It sets a tone. It establishes the ideals that we hold dear in public spaces. Many of you may not think of Harborview Medical Center as a community, and yet art is establishing a unique community identity, not only for Harborview, but as the campus reaches out into the surrounding neighborhood, Harborview has been working with artists as art planners, as community developers, to find ways that the public realms, the overlapping realms between private neighborhood and public hospital institution can interact.
Once inside the hospital, this, this facility prides itself on the outstanding care it gives. Harborview is the level one trauma center for a five state region. You might find yourself here from Alaska or Wyoming or Montana. This is where you would be treated for traumatic injury. This Harborview's welcoming environment, dignified environment, the way that the artists have taken care with place to say that you will get good care here is pride for them, for all the staff that work in Harborview, but also for all of us in King County because it's a way of reaching out to people who may find themselves in horrible circumstances at Harborview. And learn of, that's how they learn about our place. That's how they learn about Seattle and King County and the care that we provide. This is a simple project, but it illustrates the impact of roof water runoff. This is in a business park in North Creek in Bothell. And this would have been a fairly simple building, but artist Nori Sato joined the team, suggested that it be redesigned so that it would channel the maximum amount of water towards a sculptural rain drain. This is adjacent to a soccer field, and when it rains, this turns into a waterfall. So kids begin to understand where our roof runoff goes and why we have to be mindful of the hardscape and the buildings that we put in the environment. We don't only work with public agencies. More and more private developers are seeing the value of art. We were recently asked to manage a project for equity office properties at the Columbia Tower. Any of you that have ever gone into the Columbia Tower know that as a triangular building, it's somewhat challenging. You're always wondering, am I on the right floor? Am I going east? Am I going west? And the developer realized this and asked us to commission two works of art, very different from each other, that could be placed in two of the corners in the atrium. That way you would remember, oh yes, I go towards the flower form. This is Christine Bordet's Bloom Cycle. The other artwork, very different in character, is Dan Webb's Heads Up. We had a fascinating conversation. We, we offered a Meet the Artist event where business leaders and people from the entire office building came to meet the artists. So again, reinforcing that sense of community. You are a community when you work in a multi-story office tower. And Dan Webb wanted to talk about the hundreds and thousands of individuals all w collectively working within that tower. But it also gave us an opportunity to talk about things like climbing the corporate ladder versus helping each other out. And it was a wonderful conversation to have. Public art builds civic pride and celebrates our history and our unique culture and the people of our community. This is a transfer station. It's a word for dump. This is in Vashon Island. When we worked on Vashon Island, we asked the community, would you like the public art to be at the transfer station or would you like it somewhere else in your community? And they said, oh, we go to the transfer station all the time. They have a very high incidence of recycling, very high ratio of recycling on Vashon Island. We go there to meet our friends. <laughs> we go to the recycling center. We want it to be beautiful. And Deborah Mursky complied. This is the side of the building. The portals that you see are the places where you put your newspapers or your glass bottles or your cardboard boxes for recycling. The flora and fauna are all taken from the surrounding area of Vashon Island. Many visitors come to our region for the first time and understand our place by entering through the airport. SeaTac International Airport is the gateway to our community. They've been engaged in public art for quite some time, and the, the recent two expansion programs for the South and Central Terminal were managed by Four Culture. Here you see a wonderful glass artwork by Linda Beaumont that is the new security system required by, as any of you that travel know, we now have heightened security measures at all airports. Instead of putting just standard obscure glass, we used the opportunity, Linda Beaumont used the opportunity to express color and the wonderful history of the great forests of the Pacific Northwest in our region. Glass is a major part of this region, and artist Cappy Thompson used the opportunity to create what was at the time, I think we've been slightly edged out by this, but I'm not sure, but when this piece was installed, it was the largest hand-painted glass installation in the United States. It's 33 feet tall and 90 feet wide. It was a remarkable opportunity for this artist. Up until this time, she had never done anything larger than a three by three foot hand-painted vessel. 
This was also a remarkable opportunity for the local contractor that had to install it. And they rose to the occasion. Many times on construction projects, it's the artwork that we see. The construction workers show up on opening day and tell their kids, I did that. I helped do that. And that's what builds pride of place. Public art manages our resources more effectively. We have to look at ways at maximizing our spaces, maximizing public realms, maximizing budgets. This is the part of the show that we call with and without. This is a very effective tool with public works directors. We've shown this slideshow all over the, all over the United States. This is a standard DOT issue bridge. There's nothing wrong with it. It gets you across I-90. This is what they're doing with the exact same materials in Phoenix, Arizona. This is a remarkable bridge. It didn't cost any more. What's the difference? They involved an artist as a designer in the bridge. It's still chain link fence and concrete. But it echoes the surrounding mountainside of the Phoenix area. I couldn't quite get that in the shot. I was like balancing myself over the freeway. But when you look at the bridge, the silhouette of the bridge, and then you look behind the silhouette of the mountains, it's really breathtaking. This is the site before the artist became involved. This is the site now. This is Mill Creek Canyon Park in Kent. It is a functioning stormwater detention system that also serves as active open public space for the citizens of Kent. This is like many real estate easements throughout the city. It's a utility easement. It's actually adjacent to Boeing Field. We were asked to look at it for a, for a public art project with the community of Georgetown. This is what they do with those exact same easement spaces in the city of Phoenix. They have turned them into a series of award-winning pocket parks designed by artists, this one by Jody Pinto. This is Myrtle Edwards Park. This is adjacent to a combined sewer overflow project in Myrtle Edwards. When King County needed to upgrade its facilities, it also used the opportunity to establish a public plaza which makes a greater connection to the views, to the water's edge, to the wonderful natural environment that we all enjoy here in King County. It also tells the story of water treatment. As the tide rises, there are sound pipes in the riprap shoreline that create an echoing sound throughout the site. You can have sound walls, or you can have sound walls. This was a project in Miami, Florida, where a freeway development was going to require a neighborhood to take sound wall treatments. They were worried about the impact of light on their neighborhood. They were a north-facing neighborhood. Artist Martha Schwartz came up with a very interesting, intriguing, and simple idea of inserting colored cast glass into the sound wall. And it improved the quality of light in the neighborhood. These are light fixtures designed by Brian Goggin at the entrance to North SeaTac Park. They're either light fixtures turning into trees or trees turning into light fixtures, depending on your point of view. Standard chain link fence is an art material. These are colossal portraits by artist Christian Muller that are down at Six and Royal Brougham near the new transit way that's being designed, which will serve as both of our stadiums. These pieces are absolutely remarkable. This fence is about 12 feet tall, and you can see the scale there of these colossal portraits. What's even more remarkable about them is they're pixelated images created from manufactured plastic dots affixed to standard chain link. All these projects don't have to be large in scale. If you look under your feet in the city of Seattle, the mayor's office for arts and cultural affairs has commissioned a series of beautiful bronze utility hatch covers the work of local artists. This one by Garth Edwards. We've been asked quite a bit to work on park and rides throughout King County. Parking garages are a challenge for all of us, but we're turning them into magnificent art sites. Art can help communities reconcile the acceptance of, they're sometimes referred to as NIMBY projects, not in my backyard, N-I-M-B-Y. Art is a way of coalescing community around values. Art is a way for public developers and private developers to increase the value and amenity of projects in their community. This quote by Kevin Kiernan, who works with King County Solid Waste Division, I think really does summarize a lot of times the value of art. It assures people that the developments that will occur adjacent to them or next to them or in their neighborhood or on their block are going to be done to a very high quality that reflects our values and standards. 
Public art can also stimulate economic development and attract visitors. Cultural tourism is a burgeoning industry throughout the United States, and Seattle is really well poised to capitalize on this kind of activity. Many of you are familiar with the downtown Seattle bus tunnel, but what you might not know is it's a major tourist attraction. In the city of Tacoma, they've used cultural amenities to build their entire waterfront development. This is the Museum of Glass in Tacoma. They also have a brand new contemporary art museum. They're attracting a high level of residential development. The art helps activate the place night and day. It makes it feel safer. It makes it feel populated. They've also used their downtown link light rail to express the history of the region. Here you see work by artists Nanda D'Agostino and Nate Slater that talk about the very earliest first peoples, fishing economy, as well as local recreational and commercial fishing enterprises. When this project first opened, it was published on the cover of Landscape Architecture magazine. It's also been featured in the Pacific Northwest Magazine Travel Guide as a must-see park in King County. The front page of the Valley Daily News said you could get, you could hold a wedding here. It's a functioning stormwater treatment facility adjacent to a sewage treatment plant in Renton, Washington. It's a remarkable facility and I think it illustrates why artists are so important working in the public realm. Artist Lorna Jordan came on to the team, which included Brown and Caldwell engineers, and said, what if we don't close it up? What if we don't put chain link around it? What if we turn it into a community amenity that talks about cleaning stormwater? What if we link it to our trail system? What if we provide usable, public, beautiful space? I think it took an artist to imagine that looking at a stormwater detention facility adjacent to a sewage treatment plant. And just in case you think we're exaggerating about the weddings, we're not. <laughs> we just recently completed or are in the process of completing a series of bridges in Snoqualmie Valley. The old historic bridges have to be replaced. They can no longer handle the loads of our growth in this region. But they're loved. They were beautifully crafted and beautifully made. And these newest bridges, we're also bringing artists on board the team. Here you see the Meadowbrook Bridge, which was um, done by artist Bruce Myers. These cast bronze panels flank the bridge in, in the four corners. And this is a one-way bridge, so you have to stop and wait until the car comes across. So you have time to look to the left and the right and see the beautiful bronze artwork that expresses the history of the Snoqualmie Valley. On November the, the 9th, we'll be opening a new design team bridge that artist Cliff Garten designed in the city of Redmond. And this was a partnership between the city of Redmond, King County, For Culture, and the artist Cliff Garten. Cliff just submitted his artist statement um, to me in preparation for opening the bridge. And I wanted to end, I'm almost done, this is my last slide, but I sort of wanted to end with this note because I think it's a magnificently written statement and I'd love for you to carry away this sentiment today. These are Cliff Garton's words. The York Bridge is a collaboration of public art, engineering, city and county government. Because of this collaboration, the bridge functions both as a way to cross the Sammamish River and as a form for expressing the public identity of the site where we have invested our efforts. The art and the bridge are separate, but they're together. The York Bridge connects us over the Samish River as well as connecting us to the idea that the things we build in the public realm can also have a transformative and poetic quality. The percent for art budget allowed everyone who made the bridge to imagine a different public realm, to go the extra mile, to give the bridge the capacity to become interesting to express a new identity for a place and a community and to celebrate the public realm. This is important because the bridge, unlike an exhibit of art in a gallery, will not disappear. The bridge needs to be given a reason to endure that is greater than its base function. We recognize that as public developers, we're often in the position of working with talented artists, but we also know that many private developers are more than willing to step up to the plate and make our public spaces better. 
To help aid that, we've created a registry of 105 artists with over 3,000 images. It's online. Maybe James will be the only person that can access it, but <laughs> nonetheless, it's there. We make free public presentations to developers, designers, builders in our region, encouraging them to hire artists. They've all been pre-qualified. Their skills range from being able to design and build a light fixture to being able to design and build a bridge. And we're encouraging people to explore the talents of these artists when they develop their next project. Thank you so much for having me today. I've really enjoyed it. And I will take questions. Oh, what? One more thing before I forget. I brought these public art guides. This art belongs to you. This is your collection. You own it. Go see it. So for any of you who would like to know how to get there, we just produced public art guides. They're throughout King County. They're designed in easy-to-do tours with your friends and families. Go see it. Experience art. Take a picnic lunch to a sewage treatment plant. Enjoy the art. That was, don't go away. Skip. We've got time for a couple of questions. We have time for a couple of questions. Skip's got the microphone if you want to take advantage of this unique opportunity. Oh, here we go. A guy, this is a, an actual guy with knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I know he is. Dwight has a lot of knowledge about yeah, this. Uh, wonderful presentation. Can you tell me, are the artists that you work with all for, uh, local from the Northwest or the artists come from around the country or? They come from around the country. Each project we do, we take a look at what budget we have and what our goals are for the project. And then we work with an advisory committee of citizens who live throughout King County and they will establish the geographic area. So they may restrict it to King County or to the Pacific Northwest or they may do a national call. In the case of the airport, we've even done international calls. Wow. Here we go. I heard you say on one of the projects that it didn't cost anymore. I think it was the bridge to do that. Is that generally the, uh, consistent among projects that it doesn't cost anymore to put the art in? It varies. I can't say that it doesn't always cost anymore, but typically we're only working with 1% of the budget. A lot of construction projects will even be carrying as much as 14 to 15% of a contingency. So when you look at the 1% investment, it's a very small amount. In the case of our Artist Made Building Parts program, it doesn't cost any more. That looks at the 99% of the budget you have anyway. You have to buy windows, you have to buy railings, you have to buy doors. You could buy them from local artists. Great. Thanks. Kevin. Thank you. I want to ask them a question before you go. You know, uh, one of the things I love about Rotary are these unexpected presentations. We uh, get learn something because this is an area that we didn't know about. But let me ask you, this is something we're all in authority on. How many of you think Seattle is a better place to live because of public art? See? Yeah. You do good work. Thank you. What a great thing to live in a community that values that. Kath, that was just fabulous. I want to thank you and all of our program participants. I want to welcome all our guests and particularly our newest member, Carl Bowman. This week's pretty good rule. The details are just as important as the big picture. Next week at the convention center, we are adjourned. Seattle Rotary Online is made possible in part by a grant from First Choice Health, now providing return to work services that help get absent employees back to their jobs. Healthy employees produce healthy companies at First Choice Health. And by Enterprise Seattle, for over 35 years, Enterprise Seattle has provided client-based economic development services to businesses throughout King County and its 39 cities. More information on Enterprise Seattle and how they help businesses grow and prosper can be found at www.enterpriseseattle.org.